All right, going live. This is my uh, stream. I'm going to be making some comics, doing it all myself here. Uh, uh, pencils, lettering, inking. I'm not sure exactly what I'll work on today. We're just going to jump right into it. Um, let me change my camera view here. Uh, before I start, I get a lot of questions. What, what am I using? Um, drawing and Procreate. So uh, these are my ultimate comic drawing toolkit to save you time. So I've got all my brushes and templates and everything you're going to see me drawing in. In this video, uh, I have right here on the uh, gumroad.com slash comics. It'll be up on the screen here too, down in the lower left, if you want to go check those out. So yeah, all my, uh, all my brushes that I'll be using today, old school inker brushes, uh, maybe some halftone shaders, things like that. They're all in there. And uh, my Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash comics. So the comic that I'm going to be about to be uh, drawing here, um, patrons at the secret agent level will get a signed copy of the printed book when I'm done. So, you know, support that uh, if you want to. I appreciate it. And I'm going to get right into some, uh, some making here. Um, kind of show where I was. Okay, <clears throat> little review of uh, the last video I inked yesterday before I jumped off to do some, to eat some lunch or whatever. Um, finally finished coloring this. Let me switch the view. Finally got this page colored. All in all, looks like, uh, let's check the stats, but yeah, I did some nice cool little effects on the watch there. Visible guy showing up there. It's kind of fun to mess with. Um, let's see how how long this page took me. It's the nice thing about working in Procreate is it keeps me honest as far as how much time I'm using. So here we see, if you can see real small there, 13 hours and five minutes of my life <laughs> invested into this page. And I think I drew most of this page on the other stream. So if you want to go back and see, I. So I did the, the penciling without rulers of all the, the perspective and stuff like that on these buildings and uh, this setup shot. So on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and uh, check it out. And i um, going to see where we are right now in the story. Got some fun. Uh, I've got a fun page to start with from scratch today. So let's see here. Let me think. Um, so after this page, I kind of have like a montage setup page. I've been doing a lot of sequential art. And in this layout here, you can see that's the page we were just looking at layout wise. So um, that's page seven. And then I wanted to throw in page eight. I sort of have like this, you know, thinking of it like, a, you know, an animated series or something. You turn the page. So I've um, designed it so that, you know, you see that guy appearing behind him and the, the page I just showed there. And then we're gonna cut to a more of like a montage, like this is Secret Forces, right? Like something exciting before we cut back into the other sequentials. So this will give me a, a chance to kind of um, show a couple things off. I've already laid out the, um, I've already pulled my layout into, so this little guy, where is it? Well, I actually did more did more than I thought. So let me see. So I've pulled this uh, layout and pasted it into a page here. This might not be exactly how I want it laid out. This is my rough, um, you know, real loose. So I kind of want the uh, ship that they fly around in, uh, the Astra. And there's going to be four people, four characters in this story. I had a fifth. Uh, but I don't want to add her in the story right now. So it's just too many characters to, to, I already have too much going on in this issue with the, the space force and the Indians now, and then this other stuff. So I didn't want to focus on, I feel like just throwing five characters in there is probably not good. Um, cause the kind of like the ship itself is kind of, uh, it's kind of a character, you know? I want to have some uh, context there too. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. 
Um, and I've been toying, toying around the layout a little bit. I kind of want the logo for Secret Forces on this page. Um, and a little text that I have, like a little intro text, like, you know, kind of like a picture like the A-Team or an old TV show where every episode, you know, there's like a tagline. I used to have it for the Hero by Night, like, you know, for over 50 years or for 10 years, Hero by Night, blah, blah, dee, blah, 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 and then, and then he vanished. This is Hero by Night, kind of like that intro you know, narrator. I kind of like that in the comics that I, that I read. Okay, so uh, I don't need my background templates for this one, I don't think. But I'm going to leave them on just for now. And I'm going to fade that out. That's just the rough, rough, rough sketch. And I think for this, uh, you know, I'll have the characters like code name or whatever, and maybe a little side panel. Um, a side panel. Uh, let's see here. Showing a little bit about the character like what they're up to and just make an action shot. Um, and then I think the ship uh, here. Mm, I haven't decided on, on that yet. Okay. I'm just going to get into um, some drawing here. Basically, a page like this, I'd probably start with like the heads and just have a little fun. And then, as I'm doing those, penciling those out, I'll think think about what what else I'm laying out here. So, really, really starting from scratch with this one. Um, as a matter of fact, I kind of want to just pull in the logo. I made a couple um, batches of um, logos, so here's what you can do here. Whoop. On the, on the old iPad, we can let's switch my camera around here so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe. All right. We're going to let that. There we go. You have to look at my ugly face. Um, so if you just hover on this guy and pull it up and slide to the side, now we have the files. I already put some logos in here. Um, oh, cool. I like this one, so I'm going to just pull it in here and drop it in. I made this in Photoshop uh, separately. All right, so that's kind of the idea of where I want that. And the Astra ship will be behind it, so I just wanted to have that in there as a placement. And I think my cell phone, let's see... Oh, okay. Um, uh, okay. All right. So yeah, I want to just make sure I have that placed where I want it. And you can do that too. That's a nice thing if you're, you know, if you have graphics or um, certain elements, you can drag them and drop them into your template in this program, which I like. So I kind of want that as a placeholder. Um, put it on way on top. Put another layer here for in this guy pencils so we got the rough pencils but we'll do even uh, more really get into it here um just gonna go with it going pencil this whoop wrong brush yeah, 13 hours on that page. Uh, it's not not bad. I mean, considering pencils, inks, letters, colors. It's a city scene, too. But it's interesting. I posted on uh, my Instagram that, wow, it's not many people know or think about art that way or songs or albums. 
And I often think, <clears throat> I mean, as what someone that does it, I think, uh, wow, I wonder how much time they actually, you know, have in that. That album or that drawing. It's, someone's going to look at that page probably for like, you know, brief second. This will all be black. So, you know, the idea here is they fly around in a uh, <laughs> top secret triangular ship called a T. T-38 Astra, something like that. You know, thing that people see flying around occasionally. Don't know what it is. Well, it's these guys. Secret forces. And it's mostly an invisible ship. So we'll have some... Uh, I'm not going to worry about the dialogue for these right here, but there is going to be some dialogue coming in. Just put the blocks there. Like, you know, something like, you know, when shit goes down and you don't know what to do, call the secret forces. Boom, boom, boom. Like, right? like an intro. <laughs> Okay, cool. And then everything else, I think, like the background, I'm going to paint. I'm going to do some cool, you know, like sci-fi. Cool shit. Oh, life. Yeah, so I'm normally at my day job right now, so I've been taking a week off to, to work on myself and chill out a little bit draw some comics kind of think about things so it's not it's not normal for me to be streaming at this hour but i want to so what the heck i mean this could almost be i like i don't know I like the sequential art, but it's every once in a while it's nice to have a nice, uh, you know, some character intro headshots or something like that, as if it's an animation or, you know, just a cool scene in a little comic here. Since I'm going to ink it, like I said, I might just get the basic, uh, you know, The basic lines I know will be here. Also, I don't know, but looking directly at the reader is kind of weird. Sometimes you kind of want to have them looking over their shoulder, maybe a little bit. A little trick. When they're looking directly at you, it's kind of, I don't know. Someone told me that once, just to kind of not. Not have your characters looking directly at the reader, at you. This guy has a giant stitch on his head. And inside, it can kind of open up. And uh, the idea here is that the stitch is a living prison. So inside, he has mostly bad guys. Yeah, it's a bad guys that he's captured from. It's a long story, but um, he uh, he's kind of like the living prison for multiple dimensions. So when people come here from other dimensions and they're not belong, they don't belong here. Or they've broken some interdimensional law. The stitch kind of shows up to contain them. And he also has this crazy thing that comes out of his head that looks like a, a shadowy figure. And actually, wait, nah, I'm not going to put it on there. I'm put it over here. Right. <clears throat> Right. 
Sometimes when I'm drawing him, I, he has more of a narrow face. He doesn't have like a chiseled superhero jaw. He's a little skin, little toned and skinnier than than uh, like a superhero, you know. More narrow face. I created this character a long time ago, and uh, that's part of the fun part about what I'm doing right now is um. Um, a lot of these characters I created when I was in high school or, you know, just having fun with friends or, um, and so kind of like bringing them back and giving them things to do in a context, but the stitch has been in a lot of my comics, um, here and there. So let's do this. This will be his, you know, it's like action panel. It's it's William. Hello. I do use Procreate. I prefer it for multiple reasons and I've talked about them in other streams, but yes, I love Procreate. The brushes just seem to flow a lot better to me. I like my pencil brushes and templates. They all work a lot better. Okay, so this is the first guy. Stitch, we're going to get back to... Well, I kind of know what he's going to be doing, so let me just go ahead and sketch this out a little bit. Let me come like an action shot. Kind of freaky when he uses his power or whatever. Kind of like a lightning when he, when he actually opens up the, the prison. Maybe we'll just show someone like trying to escape. Ah, they're getting like pulled in. You can't really maybe see it. Kind of like his. Let's see. We'll get in there and fix that. Pose a little bit. I don't even like those legs. in this panel because like when he when he actually puts his ability to use it kind of will have lightning and magic looking stuff um, so that's our first main character of the like squad or crew 
The second is Detective Darcy, which he doesn't really have any special powers per se or anything like that. He's just a really good intuitive detective thinker, smart naturally. And I have these characters up on the webcomic. Um, on Webtoon, you can look up uh, Secret Forces. So, you know, I'm talking about them like they actually, you know, have done some stuff. So that's where you can find that if you're looking for it. But um, Darcy here was a detective and kind of fell into the Secret Forces as one does but also had a backstory a little bit because like his parents were in the space force and saved the universe and he became an orphan, never knew his parents were in the, the space force and always kind of knew he had like a, a calling for the greater good. And so he drew him to become a soldier and a police officer, detective, kind of serve the greater good that way just like deep down. So the idea of the secret forces is that they, they take an oath to, um, oh, there goes my pencil, um, to kind of like the, you know, kind of like the military or like judges or police officers take an oath to up, uphold the peace and things like that. The uh, secret forces take an oath to like defend basically our whole entire reality, like our whole dimension from uh, stuff. I can make his head a little bit bigger. That's fine. And um, his curiosity kind of, the idea is that like the universe kind of pulls you to where you're supposed to be. And everything kind of comes together. He was always meant to be part of the secret forces. So even though he doesn't have any kind of like special abilities per se, he was always meant to be in the secret forces. But yeah, you can read that origin story of this character on Webtoon if you go back and search. Um, I had a lot of the comics on Webtoon uh, launching first and uh, I stopped putting them up on Webtoon because just out of the, all of a sudden Webtoon, some lady at Webtoon started censoring my comics. And uh, that's a whole other thing. I, you know, it was like a big chunk of my story missing because they said I drew an over-sexualized comic or something. And I was like, that's crazy because I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not into that. Like I'm not into drawing like, you know, over-sexualized characters or anything like that. I'm mostly action sci-fi. In this case, it was a, it was a, um, a lady uh, that I'll draw here in a minute, but she just happened to be like wearing like a, like a sports bra sort of thing, like laying on a surgical table as they were like bringing her back to life or something. And they were like, this is too, too risque. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me right now? What do because um, I can, if you go and look at Webtoon, there's like tons of, you know, kind of perverted, weird stuff on there too. So I was finding myself arguing with probably an intern, you know, probably like a young intern that they weren't paying much saying like, just they had the power to kind of look at these comics. That's kind of felt like, I felt like I was just being censored. Well, I mean, little did they know, I know. Junko, 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 the owner of Webtoon, friends on Facebook. He doesn't speak really that great of English, but he, we've talked back and forth and I'm like, yeah, what's going on with your thing? He's just not really involved in the day-to-day -day stuff, but I didn't want to fight with that. And the platform is just a little... Not for Americanized comics, I think. You know, Dean Haspel's on there with um, The Red Hook. His stuff's really awesome, and that's kind of, you know, his stuff's really sci-fi, but more Americanized comics. And 
Yeah, I feel like Webtoon, they really tried to, to enter that American comics market, but it's really mostly for manga and that feel of like Korean comics. Um, but there are some others on there that are great, but I just felt like, wow, that's strange that suddenly my comic was getting censored on there for that reason. And super weird. And, and I just, I don't blame, I don't blame Webtoon. I just kind of, like I said, I kind of feel like it was probably like an intern that was just like salty about something in my comic or that I wasn't sticking to their uh, 30 panels a week thing. I was doing the daily over there. So All right, cool. There's a uh... Darcy. He looks a little salty right now. You know, maybe serious. We can make up. Whoops. I'll change his face a little bit. Yeah, so anyways, his 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 origin story is still up. They only took down part of that comic, and I left it up. But it was really depressing to have them uh, kind of come in and edit it. I understand. Then I did, I like pushed the envelope a little bit there with um, the Mother Nature or Mother Earth character. She is completely nude, but I, I did not draw her nude. I drew like shadows and, you know, shapes and stuff like that around her. But she's a druid and stuff like that. It wasn't. It wasn't like just because she was happened to be nude, wasn't um, wasn't a sexualization thing for sure. But yeah, I don't like censorship on those platforms. But I might go back. Who knows? I might take this. Who knows? I mean. It wasn't one of their featured comics there, so. Um, wasn't really worried about it. Just doing, just a platform for, you know, readers, people to find it. There's a lot of young, a lot of young readers on there, so. And I still think that the platform is great. The idea of like mobile comics is, is really great, but. It's got a ways to go before it. Again, I don't want her to look. I don't want her to look directly at the viewer, just a little off camera. So Iris here, she has, um, she's the, well, there's some backstory with her, but that connects to my other comics as well. Like I said, I try to keep my own little, you know, my own little character universe for myself, really. Um, but she has an ability to kind of um, see post postcognition or retro retrocon or whatever it's called. Retrocognition, where she can see where there's um, energy that 
or she can kind of go to a location and see what happened there if there's been like emotional energy left behind. So kind of like the ultimate detective, right? Show up at a murder scene and be able to witness what happened or whatever. And her hair is also purple <laughs> for, for no apparent reason. She just likes that purple hair and it looks cool. Um, a little deeper story than that with this character is that, and again, like not that anybody, maybe there's a couple people that know, you know, I kind of kept her connected to my, my other characters in a way where in this universe, she is the granddaughter of David Day. So her mother is the elementress. <laughs> so there's a whole, there's a whole freaking, I don't know. There's a whole story behind all this, these characters. And, um, and that's, I decided to, uh, since I have, you know, I decided to put um, the characters, some of the characters from Hero by Night into the Secret Forces comic. If it was ever a movie or TV show, which is unlikely, but um, probably wouldn't be able to include them because unless I worked a deal out with uh, Platinum, but probably could. So I'm, I'm okay with them, but... Uh, um, The movie rights and shit are tied up for Hero by Night for forever. But in the comics, I'm able to do whatever I want. I can publish the comics. So I have those rights to do that. So, you know, I can make it. That's the fun thing about creating these comics is that I can make anything kind of makes sense, especially with the secret forces universe and the stitch. That's why, you know, the stitch character was made was to be able to make things make sense that characters from different things could all come together because there's 31 dimensions. And, um, that's the backdrop of all my comics. So it could be that this is the same universe as, uh, you know, that existed for hero by night or a version of him. That was maybe more complicated to talk about before, you know, I think uh, movies like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse kind of made that more acceptable to talk about uh, <laughs> multiple dimensions and multiverse stuff, but there's always that stuff in the comic book world. Multiverse type stuff is not, uncommon let's say um so with that said there's you know i've thought a different i don't really have an idea for why jack king uh, the modern hero by night ended up on the secret forces And um, I'll get to that in the story. But the way I look at like a Secret Forces crew is there's probably like you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of agents who just pledge for the greater, greater good. You know, they just choose to uh, devote their life to a greater cause, right? and protecting people and doing good. So um, there's a definite reason that uh, he is here in this book. We're just gonna make it look like him completely. I was going to change the costume a little bit, but we're going to shorten that up. It's just going to be straight up Jack King. Right. 
least I think that's correct. Okay, I haven't drawn that character in a long time. I don't even know if I have one on my shelf here. I thought I did. Good enough. His suit will be a little bit different, though. And for this, it can just fade off into you know, nothing. Because it's kind of a mon montage character heads. Montage, right? And I thought about doing something similar for the cover, but I don't know. I don't know what the cover of the book's going to be yet. I'll wait. Um, I think it'll probably have something to do with the robot head and the, you know, ghostly Indian people. All right, so you see where I'm going with this, right? Like This is uh, kind of like a, these are the characters you're about to meet kind of, kind of page here. And, um, you know, we were just in Steel City in the previous page where uh, the detective was there having a coffee on his day off. And um, the Hero by Night comic took place in a fictional Pittsburgh, Steel City. So maybe, you know, coming up here in the next couple pages, we'll have a little dialogue as perhaps the, the detective here knew of Hero by Night and where did he go kind of thing, right? Let's see here. I don't want to go too far out of that. That's why I kept the guides on because you don't want to go too far out of that um, trim point, um, safe zone for the printing. But now I see that I have some more space because I originally had a fifth character there, but we're just going to go ahead and tuck this down a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the mothership here. And the design, you know, kind of points that drawing the triangle ship thing is kind of fun because it can also help point to, you know, the actual. Thing. All right, cool. I won't waste uh, too much streaming time worrying about what's being said in these captions. I'll, I'll do that later. It's going to be cool, though. Right? So I work backwards. I know it's going to be something like that intro, like, when, they're, when you're in trouble and shit goes down, well, call the secret forces. And then here they are. This is the crew that's coming. In. All right? So you get that idea. But for today, I'm just going to focus on just the art and what's going on in these panels, and then I can, um, I can do the rest. It's almost as if the reader. My idea here is is that the reader is an agent yourself, so you're getting the background on these characters that you've just now met, you've been thrown into, and you know that they've taken the oath, so you can trust them. If they break the oath, well, then they might end up in the uh, living prison, right? Um, and that was the last storyline, too. There was a um, another member of the team, Scorpion, which was a character I drew in high school <laughs> that I brought back. He sort of betrayed the team and broke the oath, and they had to put him in the prison. So they needed a new heavy, a new um, you know muscle on the team. And uh, Hero by Night was available. Come on. It's not letting me. What, what am I on? Oh, okay. I'm trying to make his head a little bit bigger. And it could be, too, that I have so many characters on the the secret forces that possibly these are just the people for this issue. And then if I did another issue, I can introduce, you know, a couple new people. Um, I think I like this. Uh, 
the eyeball thing I was talking about. It's like he's looking this way. He, you know, he's looking this way, and then he's going to be looking this way, like that. Like, hey, I'm looking at your panel over there. Though. You got some cool powers. I, I don't have any. I'm just a detective. So, to me, that's almost ready to ink. I can just fade this out and start inking this right now. That would be pretty. I think that's what we probably do. I don't really have their. Uh, let's see. I want his panel to be a little bit bigger. Makes sense. So I'm gonna move her over. Also, want to avoid that tangent. I don't know if you saw that, but the line of his head, his shoulder was kind of coming down and meeting that slope. I want to avoid that. Now I can make his um, character panel a little bit bigger. And I'll put in some. I don't know. There's probably like 10 Hero by Night fans still out there, so <laughs> I'll put something you know, a little more interesting in this panel for for fans. You go, oh man. Like, yeah. The Hero by Night fans are fun. <laughs> so for years I'd be drawing other books and they're like, what are you doing more Hero by Night? I'm like, I can't. It's complicated. I Also, kind of one of those things, you know, just emotional baggage. Uh, maybe we'll talk talk a little bit more about that, I guess. Might as well. And where I'm at now, because that's a big question I get from people that know my, people that already know my comics, or, you know, they always ask me, hey, what's going on with Hero by Night? And, um, you know, real quick history, I won a contest in 2006 called the comic book challenge uh, I was up against like thousands of people from all over the country submitted my little pitch for, for hero by night you know it was a guy that found a ring a power ring of a character from the 50s who disappeared and then he got the powers and he decided instead of becoming a hero he was going to sell it on ebay and when he did that, he listed the books of the journals that he found. Then the old bad guy showed up and he had to use, like he had to decide, do I use these powers to become the new hero or do I um, run and make some money? And of course, you know, of course he became a hero. Right? And then, uh, yeah, they loved it. So uh, it won that for a couple of years there. I was doing that full time, making some good money. Um, and, you know, it's just Hollywood stuff. It kind of falls apart. I mean, they, they make movies based on comics that don't even exist. You could just draw a cover. You know, Cowboys and Aliens was a cover. That was the same company, uh, Platinum Studios. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of drama with Platinum Studios that I wasn't aware of, really, until I got into them, until I was in it. I was in the, co I was in the contest, and I didn't know the history of everything. And I had to, I got educated as I was winning, but, uh, you know, my experience was a little bit different than everyone else's. Cause you know, um, quite honestly, I liked a lot of the people there and I was warned by other, you know, people would come up out of the blue, out of the shadows and say, DJ, watch out. They're going to screw you over. And I'm like, you know, Scott Rosenberg, he's this evil man that's going to take your toys. And But I was trying to make the point always that I have a thousands of ideas. And I have sketchbooks full of things that will never be seen. I just don't have the time to make them all. And Hero by Night was something that I just said, you know, I'm going to pitch this. I'm either going to do it as a webcomic or I'm going to pitch it. So I didn't care if I sold it. The, I was, it was a success to me because at the time I had little ones. My boys were little. And uh, it really felt like a validation to me too, personally, 
because for years, you know, I was hustling around doing, doing freelance stuff. And then people in my family and extended family just never really, um, you know, people in your uh, circle, your family and stuff don't support this. They think this is just silly. Oh, geez. When are you going to get a real job, you know? And I heard that probably for the first, oh, shit, you know, many years of my marriage. I had kids, and I just don't see it as a real job. So even when I was making money uh, doing freelance stuff, um, hey, look at Sean Atkins. That's one of my favorite uh, artists there. Yeah, so at that time, I was hustling around drawing web comics. You know, at the time, when I was doing Hero by Night, I was making... I'm just going to drop some, I've probably, with my own webcomic before Hero by Night, this was like the glory days of webcomics. I was making like, hmm, some months $3,000 to $6,000, depending on the advertising, Google ads and stuff like that. Off my webcomic, you can't really do that today unless you, I don't know, it's, you can't do it with the ads. Like we did it back then. And I still, I would pay the bills and I would whatever, but it was, just felt like it was under the table. And my family still didn't, like extended family, let's just say in-laws, right? They still didn't treat me like, uh, with respect. And then um, when I got the Hero by Night thing, though, it changed, like, something. It was like, um, suddenly it was in the newspaper and it was connected to names like Men in Black and Cowboys and Aliens, or Cowboys and Aliens hadn't come out yet, but whoa, Platinum Studios, that's a big deal, DJ. Oh my God, you made it. You get to fly to California and go to all these shows, and oh my God. So that did feel nice, but I also kind of felt like, fuck you, in laws. Now you think I'm, now you want to come around and say, oh, he's my, oh, that's my. I felt kind of bitter about it. To be honest, I was like, you know what? If you weren't there for me and, and supportive of me when I was hustling and just trying, then uh, don't come around whenever there's good days and then not be there on the bad days, right? So, uh, so yeah, for me professionally, that was probably my best my best years in comics, uh, and then it kind of fell apart for obvious for just several reasons. I mean, platinum just wasn't. Didn't have a good business model, but and then everybody said, "Told you so." That Scott Rosenberg is a son of a bitch, you know. <laughs> and uh, but my experience is one on one with Scott Rosenberg, and let me just explain that. It's funny because he could probably listen to this. So, hi Scott. And I've said this to a million. Just I've said this to a ton of people, especially at comic cons behind the closed doors when a. It's nighttime and we're having dinner or something and someone's like, oh man, I can't believe you. How was that? Working with that guy. And I'm like, I don't know. I always saw Scott as like this uh, big kid. I never had a diabolical conversation with him or anything like that. Like maybe if he was a secretly diabolical dude, just seemed like a businessman, you know, kind of. But he seemed like a big kid, like maybe Tom Hanks in uh, the movie Big. That's what Scott Rosenberg reminded me of. And um, I think maybe he surrounded himself with the wrong. Now, I say that, but other people have told me, DJ, you're just too nice. He's not a nice guy. He stole people's stuff. And I'm like, I signed the contract. I read it. I know it wasn't perfect. But I was able to support my family and... Uh, you know, make some other good deals on the side. People were like, how are you, how are you getting paid to draw a webcomic now? That's not in that contract that we read online. I'm like, yeah, because I'm a businessman too. So I went to them and I said, hey, why don't you let me do this, this, and this? And they were like, that sounds good. How much? And I said this, and then they made a deal. You can't just accept what, oh, that looks pretty cool. You can't just accept what's given to you. Um, you can negotiate contracts, right? 
no one ever taught me that. I just knew. Like, hey, I don't like this part. Can we change that part? Yeah, okay. But anyways, yeah, um, there's a couple people. I'm not going to be salty about it, but yeah, um, there were some definite, um, definite um, experiences that gave me pause working with the Hollywood people. One of them was uh, when I was out there for, I don't know, I was out there for something. And uh, meeting an agent from Endeavor at the time who was representing. And so if you don't know Endeavor, that was kind of like the movie Entourage. Those were like the real guys. Endeavor agency. And the guy was like really raving about Hero by Night to me. And he was like... Nice guy, but I don't even remember his name. But he's like, "What other ideas you got there?" And I'm like, "I got a lot. It's cool, but I don't, I don't know if I'll do the same deal." And he's like, "You got to get out of here. You got to come out of here. This is where all, everything happens in Hollywood." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I got a house and I got kids and I got a house, wife, kids, responsibilities back home." And the guy said to me, uh, "Ah." That's what they all say. That's your first wife, you know? And I was like, what? So basically, he's like, yeah, you, uh, we'll see you in six months. He's like, well, we'll see you out here. You'll get another house. You know, Kids will grow up, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's heard it all before. And I'm like, wow, these people would sell their soul. for their, And I couldn't. <laughs> I'm not going to leave my family for move to California on a whim. I guess it happens. I guess it's known to happen. Boy, what a mistake that would have been. Um, so there's all those people around. So imagine you got the, you know, did I think that Scott Rosenberg was one of those guys? No, because in my experience with Scott, you know, I had long conversations with Scott on the phone about mostly nerdy shit. He's a big comic book guy. And he's got quite a past. I mean, he made some bad deals, obviously. And he probably ended up inadvertently screwing people over and then thinking he didn't as far as, I don't know, distribution stories that are out there. And I'm not apologetic of him because of, I mean, I can't say I wasn't there. I don't know. But from when I would have him describe me to me, what, hey, what, what's up with this thing? Oh, well, what happened with Rob Liefeld? And I would hear his side of the story and I'm like, oh, shit. I guess that sounds, you know, a lot of people say like, DJ, you're just too trusting. And I'm like, well, I take a man for his word. Until you betray me to my face or something. And Scott just really never did that. They just ran out of money. That's what happened. So They ran out of money. Things didn't come the way that they thought it would. And also, there was a couple cats in the couple foxes in the hen house, let's say. <laughs> Who, uh, you know, did some not great business there. But um, so for many years, I didn't do Hero by Night and they sold a TV show. I didn't know about that. But, you know, contract doesn't really give you money unless it gets made. So there's all these little you know, whatever. But I was able to talk to Scott over the years, and the the web comics was never in the uh, contract, so and they weren't necessarily interested in making comics. You know, the comics were just a nice thing that they decided to do because I I was adamant about it. I was like, we got to have printed comics, and they're like, well, we're just going to do the miniseries, and then the miniseries was so well received that. I said, well, we're going to do an ongoing series now, right, guys? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so we did that, like, uh, what, three issues before there was just no more. There was no money left. Everything was kind of falling apart. So anyways, that's that's what happened to Hero by Night back then. And I went on a stink because, you know, they, they owed me money and uh, it's all out there. You can find it if you want it's negative stuff. And then, of course, everyone just blamed uh, 
Rosenberg, but there was a lot of people involved there. That's my current thinking. But I've talked to him over the years about doing it again. And, uh, you know, I got to get paid to do it, but just money's never been right. And I'm not comfortable. Plus, there's a there was an air of, yeah, I don't really want to be involved with the name Platinum right now because in the comic book industry, it just had this dirty, this dirty air about it. Probably still to this day. Although I do know some professionals who just don't care. They're like, yeah, platinum, cool. They don't even think about the drama part of it. And like someone told me, maybe it was him. There's always like six people. <laughs> There's always the same six people. That no matter what you do, if you messed up or made a mistake or you had a bad deal or something, those same six people will come out of the woodwork even years later and be like, warning, this guy is a sham or something, but I don't know. In the end, I'm, I'm able to do, uh, you know, Hero by Night comic books. If we ever did film or TV, that's the gist of it. If I, if we ever did film or TV, then I gotta, you know, let let Platinum handle that, which I would because that's not my, you know, that's not my uh, expertise. I even talked to him, you know, about like, hey, he was kind of interested in secret forces. And I was like, no, this is my pet. You know, this is my, not my baby, but a personal project. Like, I can do this on my own. If I wanted to do a Hero by Night comic book again, I'd need a staff, you know. Or I would need a colorist and um, probably a little writing support. And I just don't. I don't have the money to do that myself. So if you're going to be a publisher, and again, they don't really want to be a publisher. So there you go. So when people ask, you know, what's the deal with that? I don't really like to talk about it too much, but that's the deal. So I don't think he's a bad guy. And um, I think his daughter is running things too now or something. I don't know. It's, there's not a whole lot going on there. It's the same thing. If they could, if they could make something happen, they would. Hollywood's a weird place, man. Nothing I want to be really too involved with. I would much rather have someone else deal with that part. Than me. It's nothing but weird deals, bad deals, and. Not all of it, but it's my experience. My experience. Yep. Okay, so that's what we're looking like, all right? About an hour in to this one. This is a collage montage montage page. I had to explain Hero by Night there for a minute just because people are going to see it. It's the very side. You know, if I ever made Secret Forces into a animation or something, I could just easily replace that character with some other character. I don't need to have that character in here if I, they don't want to work with me on it. I think if I, I honestly think that if I got to that point, they would be, they would love it. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you mess that up. Like, maybe comics works much differently than Hollywood, but. Everything I hear, and everything I hear about how hard it is to make a Hollywood thing, or 
make something happen. I'm like, ah, I just like to sit down and draw it. I don't need a movie studio or a special effects budget or producers or whatever. You know, I could spend 13 hours and have a nice city page. And... Right? You go direct to customers. And uh, I don't know. Don't need all that. I don't really have any. Um, it's always the question, though, because it seems like so many creators are making comics just to. Like they have got big, big movie ideas or something. And I kind of feel like comics can just be comics, yo. You know? Have I thought about doing a Kickstarter to do a short of Secret Forces? Um, I guess I've thought about Kickstarter, but I don't know. I'm not a real big fan of Kickstarters. Mostly because I'm afraid I'll fail. <laughs> but my wife told me that I can't do a Kickstarter unless the book is done, complete, and ready to go out the door. And I I totally agree with her because I was involved in some Kickstarters with, um, you know, Captain Freedom and stuff. And there was delays and uh, I finally got it out. But, um, you know, no fault of my own, really. But um, we were saying while we were doing that Kickstarter that, man, if we, you know, if I ever did a Kickstarter ever again. And I said, I'll never do it. I'll never be a part of a Kickstarter again. Ever. And then <laughs> uh, Dirk... Dirk Manning got a hold of me about that butts and seats Kickstarter, which I didn't have to run. You know, I just had to draw the comic. So I was still like, I don't want to promote Kickstarter on my Facebook. It's silly. It's silly. I should. I should think about that. But um, but we agreed. Then that um, the best way to do it is to make sure that the book or whatever you're working on is done first. That way, there's no disappointment. I actually have some. Um, oh, a short film. Boy, I don't even know. I don't even know where I would begin. Like I said, I just don't feel like I don't know enough about the making of film or making a, you know, like I don't even know where I'd start, to be honest. I don't know how much money you'd need for that or, or what, Yeah, I don't even know. I just never really thought about it. If somebody else had like a film company or something and they wanted to try it, maybe. But I'm just not good at... <laughs> I'm good at drawing the comics, but I'm not really good at visualizing or, or running it. A movie production or something, you know. I guess I'd be open to it. But... Stick to what I know, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing there. Whoops. You know, I don't want them to have the cape 
thing. I don't want that. I got another idea. We're going to do it different. kind of decided in one of the earlier streams too I was writing and doing some layouts and I'm like I need to have I need a muscle you know character to fill out this little crew and uh, it was in the back of my mind and I just decided right then I was like all right I'm doing it I'm putting them in the layout it's done now can't take it back. My wife was kind of like, I don't know, don't do that, don't do that. I'm like, eh, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna roll the dice and see what happens. There's not a whole lot for him to do in this issue, to be honest. So it's just a matter of rounding out that team. Oh, I don't like that. Now, okay. Mm -hmm. Man, my, my hand got shaky there for... So we go upside down. I'm still not happy with that. So I'm trying to keep everything in continuity, too, for the people that have been paying attention to Secret Forces. It's almost like there's a secret comic out there that you don't know about, so you got to go find it. But it's on Instagram <laughs> and Webtoon and, yeah, a little bit of my Patreon. But I'm going to try to, like, start pulling it together a little bit more with this, with this series. So... So I'm keeping the continuity going. Um, so even this little triangle thing on his chest uh, is a uh, a device that makes can make them turn invisible for like 30 minutes. So if they're on a recon or something like that, they can go to the ghost mode. Makes for makes for easy escapes. From precarious situations. I also thought it would be nice to like, because when his origin story, um, Darcy on it's on Webtoon. Um, when he finds out his who his parents were, how they saved the universe, and they're part of this thing called Space Force. It just sounds crazy. <laughs> but it's also then, you know, that public domain Jack Kirby comic strip Space Force. So I actually made it part of like the Space Force. So that's why in this issue we have actual Sky Masters is, is in it at the very beginning. Just wanted to go there. So I'm kind of borrowing some, you know, my favorite inspirations and making it part of 
a direct connection that his parents were in the Space Force. And so ever occasionally there would be characters in the strip saying like, oh, your parents were heroes. And he feels weird about it. You know, as a character, as a, he never knew his parents, but he's happy that they died saving the universe. But, but also kind of like, cool guys. Like, <laughs> if someone's like, wow, your parents were heroes. You're like, that's great. I wish I had parents, though. Wish I would have known them. And I didn't want to get too tropey and be like, your parents are still alive. They didn't really die. They just transferred to another universe. That would be, you know. It's like, no, they did the ultimate. He had that thing deep down inside of him. The fire. And they got it in them. Right? That's kind of the idea. That you have this greater good drive for the greater good. Like real heroes. The people that would run into a fire or sacrifice themselves for strangers or for the greater good. They just, some people have it inherently in them. And so his character story arc, I guess, you know, or like story is that he's finding his way and, um, He's found his way onto this Secret Forces team, which is pretty sweet. But it gives his life more meaning than busting like common criminals or something like that. When he when he when he finally discovered that there was more to the universe than what meets the eye, he wanted to, you know, serve the greater good. And uh, that's what the strip last summer was about, mainly was his started off with Darcy here, Scott Darcy, taking the um, now he looks mean. Guy, you're not supposed to look mean. Fella. Supposed to look like serious calm. Um, but it takes it, it actually shows him taking the oath. Hey, let's, let's, let's take a look at that right now. Let's just go in there. It's another beauty of this magical drawing board is uh, as I'm talking I can show you exactly how that strip began with him going in like a pillar inside the Lincoln Mon Monument. This is all online. You can read this stuff if you want. Um, let's see. Here he is about to take the oath. Got the old director that someone said looked like uh, Richard Nixon, but probably a really skinny Richard Nixon. <laughs> uh, so he recites the secret oath. The secret oath is 13 lines. So this is him pledging himself to the greater good, right? So as I'm sitting here talking about this character's history, and then he gets the coin. So every every agent carries the the Atlantis coin. And there's a secret behind that too that I haven't shown yet, but it's a fun, it's a fun thing. Um, yeah, so they went on an adventure that lasted almost the year. I did it daily for a little bit, so each one of these is a week. Um, I was putting these up on uh, Webtoon, so you can go back and look through that. There's also tons of other stuff. There's the Zombieopolis storyline. We'll be getting a little bit into that. So when I talked about a code 1965 that was 1965 so there's quite a there's quite a backstory here that's happening um, and it's a secret you haven't you didn't know about it now you do and you have to go kind of find it <laughs> and I'll, I'll make it a lot easier to, to find soon some print books um where was i yeah, so the whole year I was working on that strip, which I wish I could just keep doing it as a strip. Um, my wife would say, like, ah, you, you should do, you should do the uh, comic pages again now that you've, now that you've worked so hard inside those four panels. 
she thought, well, I'd like to see you work on pages again. I miss your pages. And I'm like, oh, I, I did too. There's a lot more freedom. You can, you can cheat a lot more when you have more space. You can break panels and do interesting, more interesting things. But I, one of the experiments with doing the four panels was also challenging myself to not rely, not lean on those shortcuts and gimmicks and splash pages. And, you know, there's a lot of gimmicks that you can do, a lot of shortcuts you can take or stretch out characters talking for, you know, eight pages and then nothing happens in your entire comic book issue. That happens a lot. Comics, right? So I really wanted to get to, what do you call it? In my own mind, I was like, uh, decompressed comics kind of suck because that's what I don't like about comics. You have to buy 12 issues until something happens. So that's good for the publishers, but for the reader, it's like, man, just jam through these 12 pages, you know, 12 pages and nothing's happened. And you like it because like, you know, my, no offense to Bendis, but he started a lot of that as far as like you really like the, the dialogue and the conversation between characters and the character building and stuff. But it was like, whoa, did I just read a whole issue where it was them talking about tacos or something? What? Isn't this Spider-Man? Isn't this supposed to be like superheroes doing stuff? So to me, I, I want some I want something to happen. And even then I was like, even if I want something to happen. It's kind of a cheap out to be like, something's happening. Now it is a cliffhanger till the next issue. And how often did you do that? And then like the next issue never came out or, or you know, or an indie, indie comic uh, failed to uh, deliver. Cool. All right. There he is. That's the... I want to go find one of my favorite uh, scenes with Stitch and... Darcy was in the um, newspaper strip because there was even a newspaper strip shortly. Um, they wrote a, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they went to another, they, they went through a, an underground tunnel. Right? Well, before that happened, wait, let's, let's just go through it. These don't have lettering on it, but yeah. So uh, he rescues this guy and he's like, come on. And they jump through a freaking, can I? I wonder if I can just go like that. Yeah. So they jump through a portal. And then when they wake up, Stitch is like, oh, be careful here. And um, these, these crazy creatures are, um, are chasing them. Right. And they're like, oh, crap. And then it turns out the guy's riding. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, here you're at. And then they ride it together, like they ride this monster together <laughs> through, the, through the jungles, the pink jungle. And Stitch is like, I know this way out. It's called a, I forget the name of this. It's like a, like a wormhole, right? And they follow me, and then they just jump in. And then they're down there with like, oh, I forget what they called that thing. Uh, Oh, you know, giant beast from the Bible. What was it called? Goliath? No, something like that. Uh, yeah, so then they find a door. So I was just really having fun with, with the uh, newspaper comic strips. But they went on, yeah, they had some adventures here. They break that lock because this guy has the ability to unlock any door or any secrets. And then this thing was there and was like, all right, Stitch. I, I named him Golgar down there and there's a fight that ensues and yep stitch summons this guy this one-eyed dude here who you know basically has to do the bidding of the stitch so they get in a fight and then they escape and then they end up at laurel caverns which is like really right up the road from from me and they <laughs> so they come out of the, the woods and i just kind of left off there but this is funny um yeah so i even like had a little fun with like here's the maze 
of how they found their way out. Which is really silly. And uh, I've got a I've got a PO box as well. So if you were to send something to that PO box, something might happen. But it's a secret, right? All right, back to it. Back to it. So I mean, this is this is something new that I'm drawing now, but it's there's a lot deeper um, character stuff that's been going on. Matter of fact, it might be fun to just drop <laughs> drop those. I could cheat and just drop those panels in and then ride in that monster together. It'd be kind of weird, but I'm thinking about people that have never opened the book before. I want this book to be in their hand and then be like, what's this? So I don't want to overwhelm them with too much. I think it's kind of like a you want more? Well, okay then. You can explore online. There's even some hidden comics. That you can unlock. So I was experimenting. He looks. Everybody looks sad. No. Yeah, I was ex experimenting with like hidden messages inside the comics, and I had a couple super fans figure them out, and then a couple that now he's smiling. <laughs> All right, that's, he can be grinning a little bit. That's fine. But yeah, a couple, um, just people figuring things out, but a couple people were really frustrated. Like, I want to know the secret. I'm, I've unlocked this thing, but I can't get to the next thing. And I'm like, I can't just tell you. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so like, I'm like, in my mind, I want to have like these like unlockable chapters, but you got to do some thinking first and maybe solve a little puzzle. And then it leads you to somewhere else where there is a new comic to read. That sounded fun to me, like a scavenger hunt almost. But the logistics of it are kind of a nightmare. Because you don't want to create unhappy moments. <laughs> so you were like start, try to start a puzzle, uh, or like a, and then you just it's just too much, and you're like this isn't fun anymore. So I want to, yeah, got to think about that. Maybe in the future there'll be some like scavenger hunts at comic cons or something like that. I did that. Um, the one year here I'll show while I'm talking about that. I got that too. Yep. Where is it? It's, um, mini comic thing. I had like the secret history of the waterfront forge. And it was a little, I basically gave away a hundred bucks, but I did a little story of different stuff. Andrew Carnegie. The waterfront looks like a pickle. And I hid a bottle. And if you brought the bottle back to my table, I gave you a hundred bucks. And it was a little scavenger hunt thing. That was fun. It's a fun little... I felt bad, though, because it was raining. And these girls were... Going out looking for the, you know, the treasures or whatever, and they're getting soaked. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I didn't even think about the rain. Bring an umbrella? I don't know. I was just really exploring how to have fun with the comic uh, in general. It's kind of my idea. Yeah, so when I'm drawing these characters, I'm thinking of those things. The things that I've already drawn them doing. So I know the history. I know you don't. Or maybe the, you know, a new reader wouldn't. But I don't expect them to have to know. Um, if people are like, I really like this. I want to see more of these characters. The surprise should be, well, there is a lot more. you got to either go find it on the website. Or, you know, download the books on Amazon, 
something like that. Most of it's free online, though. Cool. And Stitch was going to be a... I, I gave the idea to the Webtoon editors at the time, and they were like, that sounds cool. Do a couple episodes, and then we'll make you a featured comic and pay you on the site. And I'm like, okay. So I did, and I went up there and met with them and showed them some stuff. And I don't know. They just never turned it on. or just, I just never got... Never got featured there. But I kept doing it. I kept putting up Secret Forces there just because I liked the format. And uh, I had bigger ideas back in 2019 or 2018. Yeah. Was that you could follow one storyline on the webcomic and then you could pick up the weekly newspaper. Um, Pittsburgh Current or City Paper. I wasn't. In the, I wasn't in the City Paper, but I wanted to be. Um, I was in the Pittsburgh Current weekly newspaper comic section, and um, that was my idea. Was that if oh, if you're reading this comic strip in the newspaper, you're probably discovering it for the first time. And if it says, "Hey, there's more at SecretForces.net," or whatever. I wanted the people to be able to escape the reality, the, your reality, whether it's your day job or, you know, that's what a good comic book or TV show or anything like that can do. <clears throat> so that's kind of the idea when I'm drawing stuff. So I just kind of want to I'm escaping a little bit from my world when I'm drawing this stuff. So I want it to be a nice little escape for our readers. All right, cool. I'm just going to go ahead and do that thing that I do with. I'm just going to let's just call these like color guides, let's say. Yeah, those are still fun ideas, like finding real treasure and stuff like that. Maybe maybe in the future I'd be more interested in doing things like that. Like a puzzle that you download or something. Have to unlock and figure out. But it limits, it does limit you because there's probably only gonna be like 10 people that want to do that shit. <laughs> But it was fun to try. It was fun to test and experiment with how you can engage readers as well. And kind of make them feel like more of a part of whatever it is you're doing. Like some sort of ownership in it. Or invest, they're invested in it. Does that make sense?
Yeah, this is a little funner to do rather than the sequential. So every every once in a while, it's nice to just take a break and have a page like this that can kind of um, set up set up things. So. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Kind of looking over this whole composition. All right. Let's get into the pencils now over here. Hmm. There we go. Oops, no. This will be really small, so I don't need to noodle with it too much. You hear me saying that a lot. It's kind of like his signature move from those other panels. Like if, it's head, if his head's down, 
He's either conjuring something or putting something out, putting something in to the living prison. I'm going to go ahead and make a, an elf type character that doesn't belong here. Hey, Sean. No, I don't mind talking about it. Putting all the stories into a trade paperback, yes. I have thought about doing that. So I have all the pages from all the 7 by 7 stuff too, from the Zombieopolis. Um, and that was a, definitely an option of putting out a big, thick book of those strips, like the four panel ones I did. And then maybe some of the, the newspaper, making them fit the format, whatever it is. Um, that would make a nice Kickstarter, just something um, to collect a thicker book, you know? It's not something I can do print on demand or Anything like that, but as a matter of fact, that's just one of the things I've lacked time to do. I mean, I even have file folders on my computer ready to be laid out. I just need like, you know, dedicated time to sit and make the 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 book files and then I can make the I can have the um, the strip versions available on Amazon which was with the original plan for Zombieopolis and a couple of the others but I just I don't know I just lack the time <laughs> my day job just kind of ate my time and then if I did have time, I was like, I want to draw more comics, but I need to stop at some point and kind of organize, you know. This guy's got some sort of like magic necklace on. And they all try to get away, these guys. They always all try to get away. Yeah, I think I probably will at some point um, at least do the Amazon collections because those are pretty easy to do and everything's pretty much formatted. I just need to time the time to sit and format and make the PDFs. And I wish there was another another clone of me. So I know my wife would help too, but you know. Most of that will be done with. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Put the other hand right here. That's a little weird little trick for people is that if you're trying to make something kind of dynamic, you can just go ahead and put the hand, draw the hand away from the body and then and then connect connect the lines. So if you try to make those tubes and cylinders and all that shit, you usually end up with a stiff, stiff looking thing. And also this guy is like dematerializing, so the anatomy doesn't really matter much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know you have a ton of you have a ton of stuff. You got the Thunder Girl stuff and Hard Lemonade would be awesome as well. To have in a book. I really like the Amazon printing. Um, you know, you don't make much as an artist on it, I guess, but I like that. But I also uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of probably printing through um, Kablam, Mary Gregory's Kablam, because um, then I could just do short runs and do, you know, uh, um, fulfillment myself, which is nice. We're gonna, gonna basically colorize all this shit. It's gonna be some cool, cool energy. I want to leave a little bit of space for his, you know, code, code words. Right. I'm gonna put that in separate, but I'm just gonna mark it in there. That's kind of where the captions will go. Okay. I don't least think that one today in the stream. What are we at? One hour forty three minutes. That's that's pretty good so far. I also kind of feel like, you know, COVID-19 rolled in and just ruined a lot of plans. We had a lot of plans for, you know, the seven by seven thing. And we were talking about conventions and then that's COVID-19 just kind of came in and just wiped everyone out mentally. I think or at least it wiped me out mentally, you know, just couldn't keep up with all the work I was doing. Plus, you know, running that. I'm glad to see a lot of you guys still making comics. And who knows what's going to happen with the shows and stuff. I mean, I see that Three Rivers happened and I'm just not an outside show kind of guy. I did that at Twin Lakes Arts Festival and there was years where it would rain and there was years where, I don't know. I just, I don't know. If it's outside, I'm kind of like, ah, paper products don't do that great under a blizzard or, I mean, a, a blown in thunder tropical storm or something. I just don't, I don't do well outside. Allergies too. So the last thing I want to be doing is sit at my table and have an allergy attack. That suck. <laughs> I think I want him to be. Well, this might take me a little while, but I, I kind of want him to be you know, in like a a detective type of. Eh, maybe that doesn't make sense. 
I don't know what's going to this panel yet. I need to think about it more. I knew Stitch was easy, but... It might be a good... Ah, this is the this is the hard stuff here. Like, so it might be a good time to like practice drawing cars <laughs> and put him like in a patrol car or a police car, like his background. But I don't know. You can also draw him doing something from one of the last story arcs that he was in. Hmm. Oh yeah, wearing masks outside with the heat. My uncle just told me, like, with my allergies, he was like, oh, doing yard work, just wear the mask. And I'm like, if I wore the mask and it was 80 degrees outside, I'd die. Just fucking in the yard dead. No. Kind of also want these shots to be a little bit more dynamic. So I know what I want her to be doing. Like doing her vision thing. Yeah, what a bummer that was about Webtoon taking down my comics. I've only really been about it for a week or so. I don't like that. I don't want that thing on there. This is really rough penciling, but... see that in a couple pages she's actually going to do her her vision thing she can kind of see the past which is interesting because in this story you know I just showed the Indians too up in the Dakotas so it's kind of like you might be able to just see where that's going. Hmm. I saw the pictures online at the local Comic Con. It was nice. I wish I lived a little closer. I might have 
I might have journeyed down, but I did yard work that day and I was feeling kind of just didn't really want to be around people much. But someday. You know, I actually forgot how to draw her hair. I think I'm doing it wrong. So I'm going to go back and reference that real quick. <clears throat> like this one that I did here. Okay. Yeah. Drawing her a little bit wrong right now. Similar. Okay, so she got the little loop de loos, which is called. Got it. Got it. Don't really need to reference it any more than that. I can change it on her inks real quick. It's because I want it to stay consistent. Because there's another character that has that kind of hairstyle. I don't want to. Don't want them to look too similar. It's little things. I almost had it right there. It was bothering me. Let's just get rid of this as well. Oh, I really messed that up. Let me go back. Back again. All right. All right. Ah, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this right now. I might stop my stream here in a couple minutes. I'm going to keep like two hours or so streams, I think. Um, instead of the big five-hour ones. Just because. Okay. So. That was right. This is wrong right here. This is all wrong. I can fix that real quick because I knew I was like that was more viruses. Kind of signature little long hair springy style. That's good.
That's better. And it'll be purple hair too, so like, I knew I was drawing her hair wrong. I just knew it. So now, I once drew her with like really, really long hair, but I shortened it up. So she wears all black, got a little more. One more low cut thing there. Come on. Oh, I see that that angle I might just change change this up to be going that way. I can shrink her down a little bit. Maybe even like half her remember, remembering something off to the side there. I'll figure that out in a little bit. And I don't know what I'm going to have him doing. Yeah, this is probably a good place to end for this stream. I'll be working on this um, throughout the day. Um, this will be a nice little team intro sort of page. So that is it for this one. We're almost at two hours, so I'm going to stop there. And we'll, uh, we'll continue again. Maybe later. Depends. And again, you can get my brushes at gumroad.com dot com dot com gumroad slash comics and um, check out the links in the uh, description and make sure you subscribe because that's really important on the uh, YouTube channel. Cool. I will uh, talk to you all again very soon. <laughs>